everyone, this is Raza Dorani. In this video, we're going to look at four delegation workarounds related to Power Apps and SharePoint as a data source. The first workaround that we're going to look at is around date columns in SharePoint. The second workaround that we're going to look at is around the maximum and the minimum value calculations in Power Apps related to numeric columns in SharePoint. The third workaround that we're going to look at is around checking to see if a column contains data or a column does not contain data. And finally, the fourth workaround is around counting to see the number of items on your list or library. These are our four workarounds for today. So let's get straight into this video. First thing we're going to look at is delegation with respect to date columns in SharePoint. Previously, when I did the video on the delegation with respect to the SharePoint date columns, I had introduced a hack wherein we can convert the date columns in our data source to numeric columns and store it in the year, month, day format so that we can perform filter operations on our data source. Now this hack is no longer required because date columns are now delegable with respect to SharePoint. So if I play this right now and if I search for all, the, all my students who were enrolled between July 1st and July 23rd, here are my results. You see there is no delegation warning right here and at the same time I am performing the filter query on date columns in SharePoint. Now the next case is calculating the maximum and minimum values from my data source which in this case is SharePoint. Now first things first I have a list of students that has over 5000 records in my SharePoint list and if I go to the settings of this list we can see that this list has exceeded the list view threshold and I have a column called score that gives the score that the student has acquired and this score is a number type column and as you can see some students have the score some students don't have any scores associated with them. Now if I would like to calculate the max score and the min score value Typically what we end up doing in Power Apps is this. We use the max formula. We provide our data source, which in this case is students, and then the column for which I want to calculate the maximum value for. Now notice the moment I do this, this throws me a delegation warning. That means I will run into the delegation issue and my formula will not work for large data sets. It will give me false positive results. What is delegation? Why should we not run into the delegation issues? I'm going to put the link to my delegation video series in the description of this video. So do check that out. Now the question is, how do I get around this delegation error? To get the maximum value, I'm performing a sort operation on my data source students and I'm sorting by the score column descending order. That means it will get me the highest score first. I do not have any delegation warning here because I'm allowed to perform sort queries on numeric columns. And if I use the first formula on top of that result set, it will get me the first value from the sorted students list based on the score. That means the highest value will go first. Give me the first value and get me the value of the score column. And that's what I'm storing in a variable right here. And that variable is exactly what I am utilizing right here in order for me to get the value without running into any delegation errors. I get my maximum score, which is 98. In order for me to get the lowest value, the concept is very similar. So if I head back to my on visible function again, this time I am performing a very similar operation where I'm sorting the score in ascending order, getting the first value, but in my scenario, there could be cases where the score is empty. So as you can see, I have some empty scores. And in that case, my lowest score would be empty. I do need the lowest score value that is not empty. And what I have done in this case is I am first filtering my students list where the score is not equal to blank. And that's the reason why I am able to get all the scores of the students that are not blank first and then I'm sorting it based on ascending order. So I will get the lowest score and then that score is what I'm storing in this variable. And that variable is exactly what I'm leveraging right here. I have this drop down which shows me highest score and lowest score. Now I already have these score values in those two variables that I stored. So what if I want to search for which student has the highest score? In that case, all I had to do was this. For the items property of my gallery, I am first performing the if query to check to see 
what is the value that's been selected in the drop down so if it is highest score then filter the students where the score is equal to the highest score variable that i have stored otherwise filter on the lowest score variable and now if i play the app the highest score is john patricia who scored 98 and if i switch over to lowest score that's 60 now the next delegation workaround that we will cover are around checking if a value is empty or not in this case i have my gallery right here that is getting my data from the students list. Now let's go ahead and start exploring the various filter operations one by one. Now, if I want to check if any of my students for my students in this list, if the description is empty, if I want to check for that, if I go ahead and perform the query like this, so filter my list where the description is equal to empty, this will not give me any delegation warning. That's because my description column is a text field and I can go ahead and perform equal operations here, which is delegable. But you will notice that I don't get any results. And the reason is because in SharePoint, there needs to be an empty value in there. Whereas in SharePoint, I have never set this value in the description column. And that's the reason why, although I have no delegation warnings, I don't see any values in my gallery. So how do I fix that? Very simple. Don't use the empty string, rather use the blank function. The blank function actually checks for that blank value in that column. And right here, if I play the app now, I will see all my students whose description is empty. The next workaround is if I need to search for all my students where the description value is not equal to blank. In that case, if I perform the query which says filter my list where the description is not equal to blank, you will note that in this case, it is firstly throwing me a delegation error and second, I'm not getting any values returned. I'm going to run into an issue for large data sets. How do I get around this? So the not operator is not delegable with text Boolean dates. It's just not delegable with these type of columns. And I'm trying to check to see if the description column is not blank. So give me all the students who have a description. So I'm actually going ahead and filtering the students where I'm using the starts with function. Now starts with, if you look at the formula reference, is a delegable function with respect to text columns. So I am checking to see if my student name starts with A or B or C or D all the way through the letter Z. So I'm basically checking to see if there is some data in my description column. Now, if your text column includes certain special characters, then in that case, you need to also include those here in the formula. The formula is not that neat, but if you notice, I do not get any delegation warnings here. And at the same time, if I play my app, I get my student, which is Clay Kate. And this is the only student that has a description defined in my data source. Now, the next one is on choice columns or lookup columns, the complex type columns. If I would like to check if the column called region is empty or is blank or not in my data source for my students, typically we end up with a formula sometimes like this, wherein we are saying filter the students where the region dot value is blank, but this runs into a delegation warning. Also, if I try and execute the same query, wherein I'm trying to check if the value is equal to double quotes, I do not get any results returned because the reason is the same as, as of my text value earlier that I explained. So what we need to do is go ahead and use the blank function. Now, the moment I do this, this will return all the students that don't have a region value set for them. The next scenario is how do I check if my choice field, in this case, my region column is not blank. Of course, once again, if I try not equal to blank, I will run into the delegation error. So how do I get around this? Now, in my case, my region choice column has four values, north, south, east, and west. So what I have done in this scenario is I have actually gone ahead and used this filter formula, which says, get me all the students where the region is equal to north or south or east or west. Now, if you have more values, you will have to plug those values in here. This will return me all the students that have a value set for that region column. There may be a scenario wherein I would like to search for all my students where the region is not equal to South. That means excluding South, get me all my students, excluding this value. Once again, if I try the not equal to operation, of course, it's gonna run into the delegation error because not is not supported. And if I replace this with a formula that says, get me the students where the region is either North or East or West, this works for me. So 
to avoid the delegation values specifically not equal to blank values these are certain tricks or workarounds that you can employ in order to have power apps working with large data sets and you not running into the delegation errors now the next delegation workaround is around counting items in your data source now in my case my data source is a SharePoint list of students that has over 5,000 records. Typically, we end up doing this to get the count of the number of rows in my data set. So I'm saying count rows of student. The count rows function is not a delegable function. So I'm going to run into the delegation limit. And that depends upon the setting in your app. In my case, as you can see, the count rows formula returns the number 500. And the reason is because if I go to file, if I go to settings and advanced settings, the number that's set right here is 500. I can change this up to 2000. I cannot go beyond 2000. But in my scenario, my data set is more than 2000 records. And I do not want to run into any delegation warnings. Well, in this scenario, what we can do is we can leverage Power Automate to go ahead and perform that calculation for us. I have a button right here. And for this button, I have a flow that's being called that gets triggered from Power Apps. And within this flow, the first thing is I'm setting a variable of type string and I'm passing this variable from Power Apps to Flow. The next step is I am utilizing the send and HTTP request to SharePoint action. Please note all what I'm demoing currently uses the standard connectors, so no premium licensing required here. For the send and HTTP request to SharePoint action, I'm using the get method right here and I'm calling this endpoint, the REST API endpoint, which is API web lists get by title. I am utilizing the variable name that I'm passing from Power Apps to Flow. And then all I'm doing is utilizing the select function to get me the item count. That's all I need. I just need the item count. And once I get that item count value, I am responding back to my Power App and I'm passing a number value. And in this case, I am passing the item count back. Now, if I head back to my flow and if I look at the last run for my flow, which was just two minutes ago, if I open this, my list or library name that was passed was students because I need the data for the students list. In that case, it's gone ahead and returned me this JSON body. Now, if I paste this in Visual Studio Code, this is what the JSON looks like. Now I can use the parse JSON action in flow and parse this JSON and get the item count value and return it back to Power Apps. Please note the item count value is a number type. In this scenario, I am actually not using parse JSON, but rather I have used expressions to directly get me this value. So I don't have to add the parse JSON step right here. So if I edit my flow, notice what I have done in my expression. If I go to peak code right here, this is my flow expression. My expression is for the get item count action, question mark D. Now what's D? D is the data that's being returned right here. So get me the node, which is D. And within this node, I have the item count node. Once again, I have question mark and then I have item count. So I've written this one very simple expression and I do not need to use the parse JSON action. If you would like to use the parse JSON action, you can go ahead and use that as well. In my case, I have not done that. That saves me one extra step in my flow. Now, if I head back to Power Apps, and if I look at my count rows screen on the on visible property, I'm actually going ahead and calling that flow. And I'm passing the name of my list, which in my case is the students list. So I've made my flow dynamic because all I need to do is pass the name of the list or library, and it will automatically go ahead, fire that REST API query and return the number of items in that list or library. I can also dynamically pass the URL of the site. So in that way, that flow can be completely generic. Any app can call that flow, pass the site URL, pass the name of the list or library. The flow can perform the REST API call, get the item count and send it back to Power Apps. The flow, flow performs the operations and then returns the data, which is my total item count. And I'm storing that in a variable right here. So the flow REST API total count of items that are being returned is the name of the variable dot total items. So whenever the user comes to this screen, the item count will increase for me. This number that you see right here is exactly what I'm grabbing. I am not going ahead and grabbing the entire list and then looping through the items and running a counter. No, one call gets me the value and I'm returning back to my power app. Now, if I head back to my app and let me go ahead and add a new item on the fly in my power app. 
So let's say I go ahead and add a new student. So I just created a new record in my data source, which is my students list. Now, if I head back to that same count row screen, you will note that the number has changed to 5237 and that changed on the fly. Now, if you feel that calling the flow every time on visible of the screen is an expensive operation, you can also add a button or an on demand call where the number can be calculated for the user. So that same flow that I'm calling on visible, I can also call it manually right here in my power app. So on click of this button, I'm calling that same flow, passing the name of my list and I'm getting that same value and storing it in this variable. Now for this flow that I just showcased right here, the rest API endpoint and the other details are available in the description of this video. I have blogged about it on my website. So please go ahead and check that out. This was my video guys on delegation workarounds. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please like, comment and do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.